All right, everybody, welcome back to the boot camp. You are now on day two. And uh, as a precursor today, you know, today's lesson is by far the most important lesson in trading that you can possibly learn from anybody. And I mean that with all sincerity, because today's lesson is really what took me from what I wanted to be and it, it got me there a lot faster. And what I mean by that is, you know, originally I had a, a couple different mentors uh, in trading as well as in, in general in life and in business. And one of the things that always stuck to me about all of them, every single one of them had one characteristic in mind and it was always controlling losses emotionally and financially and uh, and mentally obviously and so one of the things that they taught me was that i need to be in control i always need to be in control and control my losses as well as manage my my risk overall as well as of course try to give myself the best chance for whatever the upside is and this goes for trading or in any business and that leads me as a segue into today, which is learning about how to actually control losses, managing the portfolio. And I think the reason why I'm putting this as day two and not the last day is because this is more important than any strategy you'll ever learn. This is more important than DeLorean itself. This is more important than any strategy you could possibly learn inside of IM Mastery Academy or elsewhere. This is the most important part of trading, what you're about to learn today. And so today, if you can grasp these concepts, you're gonna do really well. Um, and you know, when we talk about trading in general, risk always comes up, but a lot of people don't think about it. They think about, you know, I need to be really good at technical analysis. I need to know how to analyze. I need to know how to utilize the DeLorean strategy. That's all, but that's not the reality of it. If you can manage your risk, you're going to have a much better time trading in the foreign exchange. So with that said, guys, let's hop over to here on the computer. Portfolio management is the name of the game today. That is what we are here to learn. And without further ado, let's get this going. Welcome to day number two of your DeLorean boot camp. Good to have you here with me today. Um, first things first, guys, I want to ask you guys all a question. How many times have you found yourself doing well trading? I mean, you may be profiting week to week month to month, and then all of a sudden a few trades wipe out your account. Maybe it doesn't wipe out your account, but it wipes out the wins you just had. I see a lot of people uh, you know, have something like this happen. Maybe not an entire account, but maybe they have four or five wins in a row. Their next uh, event is a loss, and they end up going back to square one. They're essentially break even. And that right there is some really important information because that's what we're gonna talk about today. And obviously, I want you to know that this happens to a lot of different traders. You're totally not alone on this. This has happened to probably everybody at some point in their life uh, at the beginning, typically, I, I hope, at the beginning of their trading career where they have incurred some losses that have then turned into something much worse and, uh, and better yet have turned into something like wiping an account. And so I'm here to, today to tell you guys that there really is no one magic strategy or one size fits all type trade in Forex. For all of you guys that are on here right now, you guys might think to yourself, well, DeLorean is the end all be all. And as much as you might think I would even say that to you, it's the reality of it is everybody has a different personality. You want to think of just basic stuff. How much money do you have to invest? How much time do you have to invest? What's your day to day work schedule look like? Are you trying to take this full time? And you might think that these questions are irrelevant, but if you don't have much money in an account, there's only certain type of trades you can take. Secondly, if, if you have a full-time job, I'm sorry, you're not gonna have as much success. And I'm not saying get rid of your full-time job. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is a lot of times what happens is people think that, okay, I can, I can schedule a full-time job, I can do college, I can do homework, I can hang with family, and I can trade. Come on, let's be realistic here. I've been through, I've been there, done that. Bartending job, uh, would get up at 8 a, or get up at 6 a.m. I would uh, go to school by eight, in college that is. From eight to four was when I had my classes, taking 15 to 18 credits a semester. At uh, five o'clock, I would go in and bartend till 10. 
And then from 10 to 11 and midnight, whatever it is, I needed to do homework, obviously, if I had any, and then of course go to bed. Very little time to trade. That's why DeLorean is here, as you guys know. But some of you guys right now are thinking that you can juggle all of this. You need to really be systematic about it. You need to set up a schedule. You need to figure out when am I gonna trade? Realize that London, New York session have the most volume. So if you wanna trade the most volumized times, you better set up a schedule that allows you to do so. You can't be expecting to trade the DeLorean type setups in Asian range, we all know that. So these sort of things need to be thought of on top of account balance. And understand that everybody's an individual, which means everyone's going to trade differently. You're gonna trade differently than me. You're gonna trade differently than Tyrone. You're gonna have success on trades and take a different type of trade than we show you, and you're gonna have success. You're also gonna lose. And that's the reality of it. Everybody's unique, and that's what I'm trying to point across right now. Every single person is unique. And if you can buckle down on today's concepts, you will become profitable, and you will start to see your account equity and balance increase and you'll start to see that curve head to the upside. So let's begin by talking about risk management. So that's the first portion of today's section. Risk management, what it is. It is the process of identification, analysis, and acceptance or mitigation of uncertainty in investment decisions. Think about risk management in your life. A lot of us, including me, show of ones in the comments, how many of you guys have college degrees? Round of applause for people that have a college degree, of course. That's risk management, society speaking, you know, from a society level. Why? Because when we are told to go to college, why are we being told to go to college? Go to college, get a good job, make a lot of money, have a nice house, have a nice car, have a nice family. Go on into the sunset, retire and live your life. And how, do, how is that mitigating risk? Well, what that does is that puts you with a college degree ahead of people that don't have one most of the time in a, in a corporate environment that is. Obviously, you guys are listening to this video and we're as far from a corporate environment as we can be. But in a corporate environment, of course, as of right now, I realize that Google, Amazon, Apple, things are starting to change where they're becoming more lax about college degrees. But as of right now, college degrees still hold weight. Whether it's an associates, bachelor's, master's, PhD, whatever, it holds weight. That is risk management, okay? Uh, you could think about risk management every single day. Let's hope you buckle up. Risk management. You think about you know risk management in finances, I mean, literally, risk management, throwing a password that nobody can guess on your bank account. Risk management. Pretty simple. It is, again, it is mitigating risk. It's not saying it completely goes away because you can't have that. Even if, even if you have a bank account with a password, guess what? The risk is not totally gone. Somebody somewhere might be able to guess that. Somebody somewhere might be able to, uh, you know, do something with, with, your information and, and get in and hack and whatever. I'm just going on a tangent there, but that's risk management. So in this example here, I want to share with you guys a couple things. On the left side, right here, see where it says 2% risk per trade. These are both examples of accounts that started with $20,000. And on the left side, these this is an account that takes 10 straight trades, right side, 10 straight trades. And both of them are risking 2% per trade. So on a $20,000 account, obviously 2% is $400. And so in this case, you lose trade number one on a $20,000 account, you lose $400. Moving on to trade number two, then your balance is 19.6. You lose 2% of that. Notice it's a little less because 2% of 19.6 is less than 2% of 20,000. So for example, if you lose 10 trades in a row, right here, 10 trades in a row, you are left with $16,675. Now, if we up the ante a little bit, like a lot of you guys like to do, don't tell me now, I don't want to hear that. And at 10% risk, heck, some of you guys are risking more than that, which is so sad, but whatever. You're risking 10%, you lose 10 trades in a row, you're left with $7,748. The story is, the moral here is, understanding 
that you need to manage your risk percentage. 2% risk is the ideal number in my opinion. Now I do tell people between one and three is okay. If you're really conservative, maybe you're at one. If you're a little bit more aggressive, maybe you're at three. We'll talk about how to calculate that today. But all in all, if you're risking 10%, what you're doing is shortening the length of possibility. Because everybody's gonna lose some trades in a row. Been there, done that, everybody knows that because they trade with me in my live sessions. We have weeks where we don't lose. We have weeks where we almost don't win. Okay, everybody is gonna go through loses. Because remember, at the end of the day, you're not always right, I'm not always right. What is always right though is what? The market. The market is absolutely always right. And so when we are talking about mitigating risk, we mitigate risk by understanding the uncertainty of the market, but number two, this 2% risk uh, percentage calculation. So moving on here, how do we calculate it? A lot to talk about here. First things first, I'm gonna pull up an example here from uh, my FX book. They have a great Forex calculator. Here's a link you guys can punch in. For whatever reason, it won't let me put this link in the go live platform or, or whatever, because it has a dash here. It, uh, it loosens the link up and it won't send fully. So feel free to go on Google, search position size calculator. And uh, at that time, you'll see that it'll probably show up with the MyFX book version, which is the picture you see here. So this is like a step-by-step -step systematic way of doing this. So on the left side here, as I say, enter account currency. So up here, is going to be a drop down. You're going to want to enter the currency that you are currently using. So for me, obviously, USD. A lot of you guys are going to be using euros or pound. And then some of you guys will be using CAD. And then a few of you guys will be using the Aussie dollar. And I'm trying to think of anybody else that's consistently on my sessions in different currencies. But nevertheless, drop down, choose your currency that you use on your account. After that, you're going to enter your account size from the balance. Okay. It's a little bit more of a conservative approach to do it from the equity. Uh, the reason being is when you're using your balance, you are not taking into account a winning trade, but you're also not taking into account a losing trade. You're being conservative on both ends of the ball and both ends of the spectrum. So with that said, you're going to look at your balance from your MetaTrader 4 or your trading viewer or your whatever your online platform is, not your equity. Finally, you're going to enter your account uh, risk. And that is right here under risk ratio percentage. So notice we just talked about last slide here, we talked about this 2% risk. That's what you input right here. So that's what you input right there under risk ratio percentage. That's that 2%. So you guys could put 1%, 2%, 3%. Some of you guys are gonna get crazy with me and don't, don't tell me what you're gonna put, but that's what you're gonna put. Obviously the ideal scenario is 2%. That's the middle ground. A little bit more uh, aggressive traders are at 3% and a little bit more conservative traders are over here at 1%. But all in all, that's what you're gonna be sitting at, between one and 3%, so we'll set it at 2%. From there, you have your stop loss amount. This is where, of course, the last video of the boot camp, I taught you a little bit on just how to ca calculate pips from your head, from the price feed on the, on the screen. Now, for some of you guys, you may want to learn how to do that on a platform itself like MetaTrader 4 in which you can do that using tools but nevertheless obviously using the academy of IM and, and using online resources learn how to count your pips you're going to need that it's going to be required for you so in this example uh, this is a 50 pip stop loss level in this example and then you're going to also want to put your currency pair you may not think that it's important but the ask price will change per currency pair which will actually change the, the lot size that you're gonna be using. So in this example, we have Euro New Zealand. It doesn't matter, you put in whatever you're obviously trading at that time. And then you just hit calculate. And when you do that, you're gonna notice that it'll say what your risk is. So on a $15,000 account, 2% of that is 300 bucks. On a 50 pip stop loss, that allows me to put in 0.86 lots on that position. So 2% risk is 300 bucks. And as it says right here, double check your reward is at least double your risk, AKA one to two risk to reward ratio. Meaning if we are minimum risk to reward ratio on this trade, what would our minimum reward be if our 2% risk is $300? What would our minimum reward be dollar amount wise? Well, our minimum reward would be 600. 
Okay, so we're risking 300 for a minimum, minimum, not max, minimum reward of 600. If it's 800, 900, 1,000, 12, 1,300, 1,500, 2,000, that's great. The higher, the better. But again, the whole segment here we're talking about is how can we lose more than we win and still make money? How can we lose more than we win and still make money? And that all comes back to double checking that risk to reward ratio. Okay. So last time I checked, you aren't 90%, 80% or even 70% accurate. It's very hard to hit over 70%. In fact, historically speaking, I trade in the 60s. Now we've had some good months with DeLorean, as you guys know, and we've been hovering in the mid to lower 70s, which has been absolutely phenomenal because we can lose more than we win and still make money. So literally anything over 50% is icing on the cake. But again, last time I checked, nobody is 90% accurate. And if they say they are, they're fibbing. And so we're going to lose some of our account. And that's where I come in here to show you some of the difficulty with recovering the account. So trading, as I've said, is not easy. You are literally being told, excuse me, you are literally being told to tell the future. Think about that for a minute. You're a fortune teller. You're, you're guessing using data and systems to see if you're right. And the reality of it is, is that you are going to lose from time to time. And if you start to diminish your equity, you're actually going to need more to recover. So looking at this, 20% equity loss, we need to gain 25% back. 50% uh, equity loss, we need to gain 100% back. Say you lose 80% of an account, you need to gain 400% back. A lot of people don't understand that, why that is. Well, let, let's look at this for example. Let me just sit back here and explain. Let's say we have a $1,000 account, $1,000 account, and we lose 20% of it. Pretty easy math. $800 is left. When you are risking 2% on $1,000 versus risking 2% on $800, which one has the higher lot size? The $1,000 one, of course. It's all math. That is why you need more equity to recover from losses. That is why when a market crashes of any market, it's detrimental and it's harder to climb back up to the top. It's easier to crash than it is to climb to the top because it takes more to get the same distance because of the equity piece, because your smaller equity and the percentage gain needs to be higher. And a lot of people think, oh, if I lose 50% of my account, I need to just regain 50% of my account. That's not the reality of it. So again, this is important to remember. This is not here to scare you. It's just here to put that information in your head because at the end of all of time, when everything is said and done and you guys are off into the sunset, your ability to manage your equity is your ability to make money. You have to figure out how can I lose equity? How can I lose more than I win, still make money? Okay, so that's not it. Managing a proper portfolio is more than just a lot size. What we just talked about is basically a lot size. You need to have a few standards each time you actually take a trade. You need to have the risk percentage, which we talked about, between 1% and 3%, depending on if you're conservative or aggressive. I'm sitting at 2%. You need to have a risk to reward ratio of a 1 to 2 minimum, meaning for every 1 pip or 1%, whatever measurement you want to use, you're risking, your reward is 2 but the final is all caps there, portfolio mix. Traders tend to forget to mix their portfolio. And uh, this is now going to be the most important part and the longest part of this segment here. So I have a question to ask all of you guys. If you are short selling Euro dollar, is it wise to trade Aussie dollar or New Zealand dollar or other dollar pairs in the same direction with the same type of trade? Well, first and foremost, if you're short Aussie dollar and short Euro dollar and short New Zealand dollar, do you expect dollar strength? Yes or no? Well, of course, 
Yes, because the second three letters indicate the USD, which means any time the chart goes down, that means US dollar is gaining strength. Okay, so in this example, if you're short Euro dollar, that is saying that you're expecting some dollar strength, some Euro weakness. Now, this does not insinuate that every dollar pair has to drop, not by in the longest run. But what I am here to tell you is that you don't want to trade the same type of trade, the same direction on the same currency. Meaning, if you get a DeLorean alert on your panel that says to short Euro dollar on the 15 minute time frame, you get a DeLorean alert to short Aussie dollar on the 15 minute time frame, and you get a DeLorean alert to short New Zealand dollar on the 15 minute time frame. Those are all three of them. You get an alert on the 15 minute at the same time and you look at them and they all have the same properties. They all look the exact same. The EMAs are lining up around the same levels. It looks very similar, almost like a mirror. You know for a fact that that is a very similar setup. And what do you think are the odds that one loses that they all lose or one wins that they all win. It's much higher, much more likely in this scenario. And so what happens is, is traders tend to find a setup that they really like and that's cool. But when they find it, then what happens is they might find the same setup on a different currency pair. I find it all the time with the yen group. It's very, they, they're always systematic. And you guys have been through that in my live sessions. You know, we have, you know, pound yen, but then we're also trading CAD yen and whichever one gets filled first, we delete the other. You guys have been through that with me. I, I practice what I preach here. And this is the same thing. You don't want to take multiple trades because what you're doing is you're betting across the board on the currency. You're betting across the board on what's going on. That right there is what's important to remember. You're betting on a currency strength or weakness. And if you do it across the board, you're going to run into some trouble. So this is called doubling down your risk. And if one of these trades lose, the likelihood of multiple losing is much higher. You have to find a mix. So here's my protocol. I'll write this down for a mix. Trade one yen group, one dollar group, one cross group, and one commodity group pair at a time. No ifs, ands, or buts about this. And what this means is that we're going to trade this way per type of trade. So there could be an investment type of trade where we're holding for months or even years. Some of us trade swing trades in, in uh, Shadow and in DeLorean and all that sort of stuff in the live rooms. And those tend to last for weeks or sometimes months. And then a lot of us scalp, which are in the day range or sometimes even hours. And so what I mean by this is maybe you have a trade that is long on pound yen and you're, you're, you're buying pound yen for years to come. That's an example but you also just suddenly see a short-term opportunity on pound yen that's going to last an hour that not that's not necessarily doubling your risk because they're completely irrelevant they're not connected in the least but what is connected is if you get delorean setups across the end pairs or or sequence setups across the dollar pairs or delorean fringe trades uh, across the cross pairs what happens is, is if you start to trade them all, the same time frame, same type of trade, all that sort of stuff, if you start to trade them all, you're gonna run into some trouble because they're gonna probably have the same outcome. And granted, sometimes you're gonna make a lot more money and you're gonna be happy, but when they all lose, then it's gonna leave you scratching your head going, oh crap, what did I just do? When in reality, you should have only been in one of those trades. So again, how I break it up is the yen group and I have four or five yen pairs such as CAD yen, pound yen, euro yen, New Zealand yen, those sort of things. I also have the dollar group, which is things like euro dollar, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, uh, dollar CAD. And then I have the cross group, which is uh, euro pound, euro New Zealand, pound Aussie, and uh, pound CAD and those sort of things, pound New Zealand. And th then that group. And so when you do this, this is going to help you to not what we call, quote unquote, doubling down your risk. Same type of trade, same, uh, same time frame, in the same currency pair, in the same currency realm. You're, you're trading it off of the same idea, probably the same fundamental structure. Everything not only technically lines up, but fundamentally probably lines up. And all these things are really important to remember as you go into a trade. So don't double dip. So this 
you're probably going to spend quite some time on. But this is an example showing you correlation. So on this chart here, this chart might save you some money tonight. You know, you got to start looking and understanding strength. At the end of the day, everything is determined off of strength. That's why I love the currency markets. We're not buying a company where it's the company either being stronger or weaker. We are buying a currency pair and one's always weaker than the other. The market is always fluctuating up and down and we're not necessarily at risk going one or the other. That's why I love it. It's a way to diminish and mitigate. And so here's an example. If Euro dollar is going up and dollar yen is going up, then Euro yen is really going up. Now, some of you guys that might go over your head, so let's break it down. Okay, remember, each currency pair, keyword pair, is broken into six letters. The first three is one box. The second three is one box. So if the first three are stronger than the second three, the chart goes up. If the second three are stronger than the first three, the chart goes down. So in this example, the euro, obviously, if this is going up, is stronger than the dollar. And we go over here. Notice dollar yen is also going up. What does that mean? The dollar is obviously stronger than the yen. Oops, didn't mean to do that. The dollar is also stronger than the yen. So the euro is obviously stronger than the yen because the euro is stronger than the dollar and the dollar is stronger than the yen. Euro is stronger than the dollar, dollar is stronger than the yen, meaning the euro is stronger than all of them, which means euro yen is going to be going extremely, extremely bullish. Now, why is this important? Well, some of you guys are going to be long euro dollar and long dollar yen at some point in your career. But for some odd reason, you're shorting euro dollar. Why? Now, as long as it's a different type of trade, you might be scalping something and then long term different direction. That's OK. But if you're scalping all three of these, notice this is now bringing in more than just the dollar group or the yen group. This is correlation here. So, you know, moving down to any of these, here's here's another example down here. These get a little bit more sophisticated. So let's go through them. Euro dollar going up, Aussie dollar going down, then Euro Aussies really going up. Why is that? Well, Euro is stronger than the dollar. The Aussie is stronger than the dollar. Or I'm sorry, let me say that one more time. I messed that up. Euro is stronger than the dollar. Okay, and the dollar, this is going down, the dollar is stronger than the Aussie. Okay, you see that? I'll say it one more time. The euro is stronger than the dollar, the dollar stronger than the Aussie. Euro stronger than dollar, dollar stronger than Aussie, which means the euro is obviously stronger than the Aussie. And vice versa on the other side, if the euro was weaker than the dollar and the Aussie was stronger than the dollar, then the euro Aussie situation comes into play on the downside. Everything here we're talking about is all correlating pairs. It's all correlation. And what you need to rem remember in this boot camp is that, yes, I'm going to give you the tools and I'm currently giving you the tools to succeed. But here's the trick and here's the question. If you're taking the technical steps to succeed, but you're ignoring this, do you think you're going to have as much success as you would have if you paid attention to market symmetry and how the market is correlating with one another? No. You need to understand that the market correlates, first of all, for a reason. But second of all, it's all just based off of strength. Is one stronger or weaker than the other? And that's what it's all about. So if you can grasp these concepts, what you just did is you just took the pressure off of winning every single time. A lot of people right now, you're sitting here, you're listening to this boot camp, you're enjoying it, you're writing notes, and, and, and you have been struggling. And you have not been doing as well as you had hoped. And you're in this now four or five months. First of all, I want to let you guys know that I didn't really see any sort of success to any level until I was about a year and a few months in of trading. So first of all, if you're newer, if you're six months in, you're just still trying to get your feet wet. I get that. Hopefully I'm teaching you stuff so you don't have to go through the same mistakes I went through. Some of you guys have already gone through the same mistakes. 
Okay. Understand that the market is always right though. And a lot of people, they want to be right. I get it. You guys want to be right. You guys, I can tell because every single day you want to force the market in one direction or the other. I think Euro dollar is looking good right now, Patrick, or I think pound yen is looking awesome right now, Patrick. And I, and I get it. You're trying to say it looks awesome. But if it does not literally cross every single reason to enter a trade via the DeLorean strategy, there is no reason to enter it. And a lot of you guys like to pull and push the rules. You know who I'm talking to and you're, you're probably smiling behind the screen right now realizing it's yourself. Quit pulling and pushing the rules. The market, this is what Tyrone told me one time. The market is not going anywhere. The market will be here tomorrow. It'll be here next year. It'll be here the year after that. It'll be here in 10 years. The market is not going anywhere. So when you guys are in a rush to enter a position, why? The market's not going anywhere. It's, it's lack of patience. Where does that lack of patience come from? Now I'm about to get into a mindset portion today. Where does that lack of patience come from? That lack of patience comes from typically a financial situation. Not always, but typically. Here's why. The guys right now that are listening to this that are just trying to learn a new skill set, they already have their income shaped up. They already have you know, everything going for them. Maybe they have a stable job, stable business, or maybe they're retired. They do really well because they're just going through the motions learning how to trade. And that's exactly how they should do it. But there's a different type of person, and this is who I'm talking to now. Hopefully this is not you, but if it is, first of all, I'm with you, I'm here, and I'm trying to help you. But this is what you need to realize, this is your issue. You are not in a financial place right now to be investing a ton of money, and I get that. But what you're doing to yourself is you are rushing your success. The reason you're rushing your success is you don't have the money you want, and you're seeing this market as the bridge to financial freedom. And I understand that that is a potential to happen. And you can do that like many others have. But here's the question that I wanna ask you really quick. Are you willing to wait for that time? Or are you just gonna keep bashing your head against the wall doing the same bad habits, not realizing that you're never going to succeed if you keep doing it? Because all you really have to do is understand portfolio management and trade on the correct side of the market. That is all you have to do. Trade with the trend, with correct portfolio management. And you're almost guaranteed to start making some stri strides towards your success. But again, a lot of you guys on here, maybe not a lot of you, but some of you guys on here are in a financial spot where you are forced to rush your success. And rushing your success is shortcutting every little process. There are some of you guys that have the audacity to get on these calls and ask questions of these educators, not just me, and you haven't even finished the course in I Am Mastery Academy yet. You have the audacity to ask where we think a market is going and why and you haven't even studied yet. Are you here to be a professional follower or learn a skill set? And I'm sorry, but there's a lot of professional followers in this. And what my job is, is to make you guys realize that if I can do it, you can do it. And a lot of you guys have all the tools you need. You've got all the time in the world and you've told me that. You've got some money put away. You've got the head on your shoulders. Everybody in here is just fine. But what it is, is rushing success, rushing the process. And that's why I designed the bootcamp. We're on day number two right now. And, and you guys think, you know, oh my gosh, we're learning so much. We have not even started to learn how to trade other than is it a yes or no question for the DeLorean and managing the portfolio. We haven't even gotten on the charts yet. Some of you guys, this is all you've ever learned. This is it. This is all I've ever taught you. And you have the audacity 
to rush your success. You don't even know what you don't know. So with that said, I might be a little bit aggressive today, but that is intentional. You're in boot camp. I'm trying to take you literally by the hand. Say, this is what you need to do. This is exactly what you need to do. So with that said, what I want you guys to focus on tonight is I want you guys to focus on having a strong grasp of your portfolio. All of you guys have had the, the, the time to practice DeLorean, the four-step check process. You can watch the, the yesterday's boot camp on replay. You can as well watch the official training under the DeLorean. Not a lot of you guys ask this question. I would say out of every 90, or I'm sorry, out of every 100 questions I get, 90 of them are pertinent to the four step and the other 10 are, are a mix of portfolio management, other fundamental factors, stuff like that. Very little is talked about right here on this call today. Very little. Nobody talks about it. Why? Because is this the glamorous thing you guys want to learn about? Not at all. This is not the glamorous thing you want to learn about. You guys might not still, well, I hope you do, but some of you guys may not think that this is important. Comment down below. How are you guys feeling right now? What are the emotions running through your head? What are you guys thinking as we speak? Because at the end of the day, if I can teach you anything, I could care less about the DeLorean strategy. I want to teach you that you can do it statistically. All we're doing is using stats and math. We're figuring out how can I lose more than I win and put myself in a spot to make money. And that's all we are doing. Okay, so with that said, again, your practice tonight is to just focus. Look at your trades. Look at your history. And especially when you look at the history, look at the timing. Were you trading a currency-based mix? How is your risk? Those sort of things. I expect you to let me know in tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's boot camp, tomorrow evening. So, you know, the overall goal is to get you guys thinking, okay, these first two sessions, get you guys going. We're going to crank up the heat on day three and get going into some more nitty gritty stuff. Um, but with that said, guys, this is a, a, a wrap now on day two portfolio management inside of the DeLorean boot camp. And I uh, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to see you guys on day number three of the boot camp. And it will be live tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, I want you guys here live. And make sure to, of course, watch the replays as they go. And the replays will be available from, from infinity to beyond, whatever you want to say. So with that said, I will see you guys back here same time, same place tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Appreciate you all so much. See you later.